Well, th thanks very much. I'm quite honored to be invited. I will try to catch up some of the time since I am uh, the, what's standing between you and lunch. I will talk fast to take advantage of the Doppler effect, which is the tendency of stupid ideas to seem smart if they come at you quickly. So uh, also, since spare mental cycles are used to multitask and that reduces retention, I will try to use up those cycles. So, and if fast enough, we might even have time for Q&A. These views are mine, not that of Cable Congress, so they become yours too. Any resemblance between people or companies is, may purely be coincidental. Most material is used without permission, so I think it's fair use. And uh, it's probably fair use since I'm not paid, nor do I pay. Uh, my arrangement with, with Cable Congress actually looks like this. Uh, we'll, we'll give speeches for food uh, and purchase orders. So why me? Well, I'm, I'm a venture capitalist who specializes in TV technology, uh, new stuff. And uh, I should mention I've been at VC since 1985, just a decade more. Uh, many of my investments are in cable TV vendors, which makes me a masochist, which means also making bets on the future which requires attempting to predict the future, and predictions are hard, particularly about the future. So Alan Kay once said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And I often say the second best way is to finance the inventions. So some of my exhibits, uh, some of my investments that are exhibiting downstairs, there are many others that aren't. So Active Video Networks, of, of which I'm chairman, uh, you'll also see their products sometimes from Cisco in their Videoscape product, and uh, Motorola just uh, licensed it in Dream Gallery. So people sometimes say, how does this compete? And the answer is, it doesn't, in fact. I'd rather you buy it from them, we have less cost. So uh, Ziggo also, coincidentally, uh, launched today to their 3 million subs, uh, the active video product. Uh, and Aurora Networks, another one of my investments is downstairs, as is OnLive, of which I'm also chairman. Now, OnLive and Active Video are both uh, cloud-based companies, and each are leaders in cloud-delivered interactive TV, which is now a bad word, so I will try not to use it anymore. OnLive delivers fast Twitch AAA games, and uh, Active Video has a wide range of applications. Video, uh, Zico is using it for video on demand menus and catch up TV. Cablevision is using it for all sorts of ITV and games, advertising, and other applications. Both companies have very similar architectures, but different specifics. They're optimized for different purposes. Active Video offers games as well, but those are the casual, free kind with uh, very high scalability but, and very low cost, but low end. And so uh, what's in a name? Well, uh, OnLive is in the uh, casting couch area downstairs, and I thought that was a really interesting name since a casting couch is used in reference to the supposed practice whereby actors or actresses are awarded parts in movies and plays or other pr productions in return for granting sexual favors to the casting director. <laughs> Now, I, I'm sorry to say, uh, live will not be granting any sexual favors, but, but they'll be happy to demonstrate for you. Um, so, you, you know the cloud is hyped when it's the, the name of a novel uh, set in Silicon Valley. So, the, or, the origins of the term for, in the internet have been, it's been used since 1994, and even before then, it was used to depict the public switch telephone network. For many uses of the term, it just means faster client-server architecture. However, ICTV, which later changed its name to Active Video, has had a cloud-based architecture long before the cloud was ever applied to this type of stuff. So the key enabler of all this is bandwidth. Everyone knows about Moore's Law. A few people know about Gilder's Law, which is, well, Moore's Law is the, that the number of transistors per unit of chip area doubles every 18 months. Moore's Law has been reinterpreted in lots of other ways that, that mean other things, but this is actually what Moore's Law is. Gilder's Law states that bandwidth grows at least three times faster than computer power. So I'm not sure if it's really three times, but uh, the point is it does grow uh, higher. This is a graph of the trend in bandwidth growth since 1860. Uh, um, uh, as you can see, the, the, it, this, it's a logarithmic graph and the, uh, uh, the slope is increasing, so that's ni uh, nice to see that the second derivative is positive. And this is a, an, another comparison of Moore's Law versus Gilder's Law, which, the Gilder's Law being the green one, which is uh, labeled bandwidth, and Moore's Law being the yellow labeled processor. So, uh, so that's one of the key things that is enabling the cloud and uh, cloud delivery video services. But another one is that algorithmically things are improving. So the average bit rate to deliver an HD stream has been improving. It's MPEG-2 has, has gotten twice as efficient over this time scale, which goes from 1999 to, to um, 2013. And then uh, ABC is a, uh, uh, doubles that efficiency. And then high efficiency video coding doubles that again. So uh, meaning halves it again. So this is a, a key enabler of the cloud delivery of video services. So 
an important conclusion is that once the network is fast enough, um, then you have the freedom to relocate expensive functions. You're no longer, uh, it's no longer required that you have to have the expensive device adjacent to the TV in the home. If you have the freedom to put it wherever you want, then both of these companies and me agree that the best place to put it is not in the home. It enables you to lower costs and increase capabilities and to improve the user interface quality. This is quite literally out of the box thinking by removing the stuff out of the box. But, you know, many people don't actually, they use the term out of the box all the time, but they don't really know uh, where, the, where it comes from. It comes from the nine dots problem. Uh, the challenge is how do you connect the, uh, the nine dots with four lines without lifting your pen? Uh, the answer is basically one has to go outside the boundaries of the box in order to accomplish this. And normally when, when people try to solve the problem, they feel constrained to stay within the box. And so that's why that term applies. But everything depends on how you define the problem. You know, as I mentioned, the first solution requires relaxing the mental constraints on the box boundaries. And then, but there are other constraints that people don't realize they have. So can you think of a way of solving that problem with three lines? So it requires uh, relaxing another hidden constraint, which is the definition of, the, uh, of a dot, and that is a way to do that. And now, what about um, just one line? So there's the origami solution, um, uh, where you um, fold and cut, and then there's the geographer solution, which, uh, the definition of a line, and there's the mechanical engineer solution. And of course, let's not forget the statistician solution. You jab it enough times and probably it'll eventually go through all of them at once. And then there's the wide line solution. Anyway, the uh, point is there's lo lots of ways to solve a problem if you, it helps to recognize what one's uh, mental constraints are. So shifting to uh, arch uh, cloud-based architecture, these slides are from OnLive, but the, the, the architecture is the same uh, for the two of them uh, from a big picture topology perspective. So historically, you have the, you know, this shows, you know, classic game controller, game player in the home, big CPU, big GPU, storage, the power, heat, it's high cost. In this case, you, when you move the computation back to the, um, a data center, then, uh, then you have much lower expense in the home and higher costs in, um, in the, the network and across the network. But those costs are uh, not that high and they're going down at a, a rapid clip. And the same can be done with, in, with smartphones, tablets, et cetera, and set-top boxes, and even directly to smart TVs, so you don't even have to have the incremental piece of hardware there. Now, when thinking about trying to do this, there are many stages and steps in the network, and so this, this type of diagram shows the latency on the horizontal axis and the, the bandwidth on the vertical axis, and the, th the thickness of the line. This is what it looks like with a traditional gaming platform, and although when you move that function back to the, the data center, and then it looks like that, and you get all sorts of capabilities that way. It's important to understand that bandwidth and latency affect the network in very different ways. This shows, for example, the downloading of a, just a JPEG image. So you have the latency to sort of request and acknowledge the, the, the image, and uh, then there's the time it takes to actually download the image. The latency in this case is fixed, but the download time can shrink, but in this case the latency dominates. When comparing cable networks to, to DSL, as you can see, cable networks have, have materially better latency, and that is an advantage from the point of view of offering fast switch gaming, which uh, we think on live can help operators benefit from. So this diagram shows how the, the, in the painting of a typical web page or many other applications, there are um, many different steps that communicate back and forth between the, the client and the server. Uh, low ping time is very important to getting whatever displayed quickly. And this is one reason why uh, many people assume that when you have interactive services from a remote data center or, or head end, that it's going to have higher latency. But actually, it can have much lower latency, especially for uh, complex HTML5 pages and so forth, b uh, because of this phenomenon. I'm going to skip this in the interest of time, but all these slides are downloadable. Things get moved, uh, moving the functionality to the head end, et cetera. So public cloud, stack view. Everyone's heard of software as a service. The first few layers is, uh, constitute infrastructure as a service. Then you add a middleware layer, and you get a platform as a service. And then with the user interface and application layer, you get software as a service. 
There are actually many other things available as a service, uh, but I, I won't go into all of those now in the interest of time. So cloud has, has many different meanings. I uh, mentioned to you that Active Videos, Cloud TV, and OnLive both deliver the content as video, receive keystrokes and control uh, from the home, and they enable extremely low-cost delivery to the home. So other cloud-based offerings are more akin to faster client-server architectures. Both can coexist. The, um, there, in human nature um, is such that people tend to think of things uh, as an either-or when really they're not, and that's, that's known as a false dichotomy. There are many ways to mix and match different architectures. So other forms of uh, clouded thinking have to do with mental traffic engineering. Uh, humans have a tendency to overestimate the level of simultaneous use. Many of you may recall when video on demand was introduced in, in the late 90s uh, that the levels of simultaneous use anticipated for paid movies on demand, not free, paid movies on demand, was people were estimating that, you know, somewhere around 10% simultaneous usage. That was a vast overestimate, and it, it's just uh, the point is when left to your own devices, if you just try to do it intuitively, you come up with higher levels of simultaneous use than reality winds up delivering. And because in, in reality, uh, people tend to spread this out uh, for most applications. So beware of fears not grounded in empirical data. So uh, similarly, cloud latency is often a lot less when executing the apps remotely than on the local box. So another paradigm shift is when the user interface is local, just getting it to work well enough is the challenge and not crash and deliver a good user interface and so forth. When the user interface is not local, the box can support an arbitrary number of alternative user interfaces. I, I call this uh, NUI for N user interfaces. And uh, Active Video is demonstrating multiple user interfaces on a single set-top box now. Um, TiVo is uh, one of them running on, on uh, HTML5, which runs on Active Video. So more clouded thinking that's worthy of note is that the notion that Moore's Law makes powerful set-top boxes cheap. This is true. However, there are many costs. For example, the truck roll and software integration, which is quite substantial. And the but mainly, the challenges of serving a diverse population of devices, from the 15-year-old boxes that were delivered in the late 90s to the present. So the, by, by moving the UI to the cloud, that delivers what I call the highest common denominator. So this is a slide from four years ago that shows the snapshot of the heterogeneity of set-top boxes. So on the, on the left is uh, the top two OEM providers. We can't guess who those are. And they offered 100 different set-top box models. And, uh, and as of four years ago, Comcast alone supported 37 different set-top box models. So it's really, really challenging to offer uniform services across such a diverse base if you're trying to run, execute code locally. So some of the ultimate goals are time to market, rapid innovation, uh, minimizing total cost of ownership, part, an important part of which is maximizing set-top box lifespan to minimize your annual amortization. Better user interfaces to attract and keep customers away from uh, over-the-top competition via tablets and smartphones, which is, in my opinion, is going to be the main competition, uh, especially because they will be connected to televisions, initially via HDMI cables, eventually by wi wireless. So change is inevitable, except from a vending machine. Uh, the speed of change is accelerating. So as Darwin said, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change. So clouds do not always deliver goodness. Uh, this is uh, uh, hail impacts to windshields. But anyway, I hope uh, this speech has had a positive impact on you. And thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, we have two minutes.